Well, greetings everyone. Welcome back to Rob's Workshop. Now, I was going to do a video on the crankshaft, but I've ground to a halt. Um, I'm waiting delivery of a bit of equipment so that I can carry on and finish this thing. Um, as far as I've got at the moment is turning the main journals down. They're still way oversize. Um, machining the sides of the crank, crank webs and that's really about it so i'll put the radius on the top here so rather than sit around waiting and twiddling my thumbs i thought i'd make a little device that will help me turn uh, the crankshaft uh, crank pins here um, it's not my invention um, full credit to whoever designed it in the first place uh, it's quite a, a clever little device and uh, I'll be using it later on when I come to uh, finish the crankshaft. Um, if you haven't seen this before, basically how it works, uh, the finished journal sits in this slot here, and then uh, the crank webs slide into this end slot and are held in position by grub screws, two on this side, two on the back. Uh, the whole contraption is then held in the three jaw, four jaw, or collet chuck, whatever you have, um, this part will then co turn concentrically, but of course the, the crank pin part will be on center here. So everything will be freeing around, but the crank pin area will be uh, hopefully centralized, and then you can turn the uh, crank pin. So this video is just about making this little device uh, nothing much to it really. Uh, I did some calculations. I'll have to zoom out on this I think. Oh no, there we go. So basically we need uh, to turn some stock down to uh, the largest diameter for the for the tool and using uh, dimensions of the, of the drawing we've got 5 sixteenths for the finished diameter of the journal we've got a crank throw of 7 sixteenths and if you take half of uh, this dimension and add it to the throw you end up with a radius multiply that by two and you end up with this figure well I do anyway 1.1875 so that's the first operation turn down some material to that size and then uh, we set it up uh, in the mill machine to do all these fancy slots and things. This width here is half an inch on mine. The drawing costs a 7 16th. I've decided to make my crank webs just a little bit beefier. So these, this is half an inch. Uh, this thickness is uh, fairly arbitrary. I want it as thick as possible for strength because it's got a clamp against the side of the crank web. Um, uh, but the depth is just a smidgen over the finished size, uh, finished thickness of the crank web of uh, what was it now? Three sixteenths. So there we go. Um, off to the mill. Oh, well, these first, and then the mill. Um, enjoy the video. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you again soon with hopefully the crankshaft uh, operation. Okay, till then, take care, bye.
off. Good. I'll stop there. Right, I'm going to cut that off, face the ends, and on to the next part of the job. So I'm just milling the uh, center uh, groove that will take the uh, crank web and eventually clamp it in position. Um, I was using uh, WD-40 as a coolant and uh, an aid to preventing micro welding on the end of the, of the cutter but uh, as I got deeper and deeper into the groove it seemed to be getting worse because it was uh, making the the chips just stay in the groove and uh, without flood cooling it wasn't exactly washing away so I tried an experiment I tried the uh, two flute cutter and that was no better so I'm back to the four flute and uh, I'm just using a, a bit of light air pressure to blow away the chips before they get dragged back into the cutter and recut and it was it's working very well I'm uh, very pleased with it there's a bit of a drumming noise in the centre because it's uh, an interrupted cut as it goes over the remains of a, a centre drilled hole that I had in the stock. But uh, we'll take another cut. We're almost to, to depth now. It's, uh, it's less messy in one respect because I'm not using WD-40 but unfortunately with the uh, air jet I'm blowing all the chips and floor all over the place but hey ho! So the uh, slot is currently at 3 sixteenths depth as per the drawing and the width is at the moment half an inch exactly which is the finished size of the crank webs. Now I don't have any brass tipped grub screws for clamping the uh, crank, uh, crank uh, web in this fixture so instead I'm just going to use brass shim. I've got some 10 thou brass shim. Uh, to go down the sides of the crank web so as to protect them. Um, I'm going to have to machine flats on both sides and then drill tap um, some holes for the grub screws from both sides so I'll have four screws holding the uh, crank web uh, in position. So uh, very close, I've only got a few thou, well ten thou each side and uh, That'll be just about done. I'm going to flip it. No, I won't. We'll be machining this side and the back for the grub screws. Okay, here we go.
that's the two side bits done um, take it out clean it up get rid of all the burrs and then I'm going to flip it on its side uh, and then mill the uh, very long slot uh, down the uh, long axis So having set up the part with the uh, slot for the crank web vertical and I've checked that the, uh, the main body of the piece is horizontal it's important that this uh, groove for the journal of the crankshaft is uh, completely at right angles to this face here um, I'm using a smaller cutter than the finished size of the crank journals and walking it uh, both ways on the y-axis until I get the right uh, width moving it equal amounts obviously from uh, zero and uh, lots of to and fro in and uh, let's get on with it So that's the slot down to depth let's get the cutter out of the way I've got a bit of drill rod or ground silver steel that's exactly the same diameter as the crankshaft main journal so I'll try that I'll double check the fit I know it's going to be all right beautiful quite happy with that the sour our so clearance that's that's nice okay next operation final operation is drilling and tapping four holes on the side uh, cheeks here to um, let me use grub screws to hold the crankshaft in position the very first job of course take it out clean up deburr it and then set it up or turn it 90 degrees uh, for the four tapped holes. I'll get back to you when I'm prepared. <laughs> 